Hello from New York. We fly to Walt Disney World tonight, which means I am currently packing my makeup. This is what I pack it in. And I'm only packing the makeup that I need for the Disney park. So right now I'm going to do my makeup like I would if I was going to a Disney park. Lots of people ask me for my makeup routine since I think it does a pretty good job of not slipping. So I figured today while I'm packing everything, I would show you. So I already did my skincare because I do that before I blow dry my hair. But today I started with this cucumber toner from Kiehl's. It's one of my favorites. Then I use, let's see, again, Kiehl's, the classic face moisturizer. And then I finished with some of the Glow Recipe drops. Like these are the watermelon dew drops. I really like them, but I find them so hard to pump out of the bottle and that kind of annoys me. But onto my makeup. The first thing I do is use some color corrector and just be warned, I do use a lot of products. I don't think all of these are necessary to make your makeup not slip, but all of these are necessary for how I would like to look daily. Anyways, I do some color corrector. So I do yellow under my eyes um, because I have some pretty bad dark circles and I just kind of try to lightly dot it on. And then I do green on like blemishes and red spots. Um, which I clearly have some of. These are both the Physician's Formula sticks. I really like them because they're super light. This is the yellow one, this is the green one. Once I kind of cover what I want to cover, I go in with the NARS Pot Concealer. This is the color Toffee and a brush. And I put this over the blemishes. I don't put it over under my under eyes because my under eyes crease really badly. Um, but I put it over the blemishes just to try and sort of hide those. And my, my chin has like a lot of discoloration. So a lot of times I'll just sort of put like an entire layer on my chin. I don't usually put it up here. Like that's not really a blemish. I'm just sort of like reducing a little bit of redness. So I just realized I forgot to put my primer on. I should have put this on before this stuff, but we're just gonna have to improvise. This is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I find it very, very good because it's super like, it becomes really sticky. So I feel like it really makes my foundation like stick to it. Um, but I did forget to do that. That should be good enough. Next up, this is my Holy Grail product. This is why I think my makeup doesn't slip in the parks because the other stuff I'm gonna show that I do to make it not slip, I have not done that multiple times because I've forgotten the product or I like didn't have the product at the time. This is the thing. Ever since I started using this, my makeup stays way better. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I use it in color 2N1 or 2N2, depending on how tan I am. Right now I'm pale, so it's 2N1. And I put it on with a beauty blender, so. This is my dirty beauty blender. And I'll take some of the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, which I'm gonna finish my face with. But right now, this is what I use to wet my beauty blender. So I just give it a couple spritzes and then I pour this onto the back of my hand. Like that. You really don't need that much depending on how full coverage you wanna go. That's even maybe like a little bit too much. And then I'm just gonna start beauty blending this in to my face. And I try and use like a padding motion um, and be sure to bring it all the way down your neck. I kind of swipe on my neck. I don't really know why. I guess the skin just feels a little bit different to me there. So you'll see I put it everywhere except my nose. My nose is where I find it like slips off the most. So I like to use the lightest amount of foundation there. My nose also, it's very combination skin. My nose is really dry, um, but it also gets really oily. So I try and use the lightest amount of foundation there to make it look as natural as possible. Otherwise it just gets really textured. So I just use whatever's left on my beauty blender and then I go in and give this like a light coat. You can see like I have some dry skin up there and it sort of shows. I'm not sure if you can see, but I can see. Next up, I go with a brightening concealer. This is the Born This Way from Too Faced in color Cream Puff. And I just put this on the areas that I want to brighten. It, this is like a really big applicator. So I try and wipe it off a lot because you get way more than you need. But I put it here, just a little dot under my eyes and then also to the side of my eyes like that. And then I do above the lip. Sometimes I'll do a little bit on my chin and I'll do very, very light 
dots on my nose because again, I'm trying to reduce product there. Even this dot is like too big, bigger than I would like it to be, but oh well. Let that sit for a sec and then I start just blending that in. just to give a little bit of brightness. Next up is I use the Makeup Forever setting powder. This is color two, banana. I wouldn't necessarily like super recommend this one. It's okay, but I don't love it. I, I won't buy it again. Um, but I just tap some into here and then I use a big fluffy brush and I just like put some of this on over here. This seems like it would be something that makes the makeup not slip and I'm sure it helps, but I find that it doesn't do as much as like I would expect it to do when I wear it versus when I don't wear it, but I figure why not. I do try to be very light on my nose because my nose um, just can't have too much product on it. You can probably see it also like goes everywhere. Another reason I don't really love it, but it's fine. Next up is bronzer. I use a lot of bronzer. Other people probably wouldn't want to or be able to use this much bronzer, but I like to, I use like a denser brush. So this was the brush that I used for um, the setting powder. It's like fluffier and then this is like a denser one. And I first do my bronzer up here and down into my cheekbone with the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer in the color three tan. And I will say this is a dark bronzer. So be careful. <laughs> I find that it really needs to be kind of pushed aggressively into the my skin to really show and I put like a lot of coats on to really get it looking how I want. I bring it all the way up into my hairline so I don't have like a weird a weird line. And I go my forehead down my temples and then I do it kind of like on my cheekbone. Also, now is a good time to mention that I actually don't really do anything differently for my makeup in the Disney parks versus my everyday makeup. So this is just what I wear every day because I want it to stay well every day and also I just like how it looks. The only difference is that I'll use like travel sized products and stuff um, rather than my big ones. Sometimes I feel like I end up creating a little bit of like a line right here, which I try not to do or I try to like blend it out. Okay, but so I use that there. Sometimes I will go back in with my beauty blender and just like clean up a little bit here if I feel like it got a little bit too low. Um, Cause when it gets low, I feel like it really drags my face down. So I wanna try and keep it high. I actually use a different bronzer for under my chin. I use the NARS Laguna bronzer. It's a little bit lighter. Um, and I feel like down here, because I have to blend it down my neck, I can't have one that's quite so dark. So I'll do it all under my jawline and then I will pull this down my neck to try and make it blend seamlessly. I don't ever feel like I do a great job at this part, but it usually ends up looking okay. I also am so weary of wearing white shirts because of this because it always gets on the shirt. If I'm wearing a white shirt, I'll put setting, I'll put an extra layer of setting powder right now on there to try and like help. These are two new products that I just recently got and I've been using for fun. I have, I don't know if I'll rebuy them and like they definitely are not critical to this at all, but since I bought them, I use them. This is the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer in Medium. I use this old brush that I used to use for blush, which is like totally destroyed, but it's like a creamy product. And I just grab some and I put it like up near my hairline to just sort of like really define and like shrink my forehead. Not that I really think I have a big forehead, but um, I'll just sort of use it to enhance my bronzer a little bit. And then I usually will put some right on my jawline. This I feel like I wouldn't do unless you're going for like a really full coverage makeup look, which I like, but I know it's not for everybody. The second product is the Skin Perfector. So this is Skin Enhancer, this is Skin Perfector. This is like, so this one is more of like a cream bronzer basically. This is like a powder bronzer and then it's striped. So it's like powder, bronzer, setting powder and highlighter. And you sort of swirl it together and then I use it in the same spots. Um, I won't use it under my chin, but I use it in the same spots up here just to sort of give some shine because it has some like sparkle to it. 
and I think it's fun. Oh, I'm also using this brush, which is I think actually a highlighter brush. It's by It, it Beauty from Ulta. I think it's like a highlighter like stippling brush, but I use it for this. And if it gets too dark, which I sort of feel like it maybe is a little bit too dark, I'll just put, I'll just sort of like lightly tap this over, just kind of over. And again, I'm gonna clean up under there. Next up is contour. I contour using Hoola, um, this little mini Hoola bronzer, which comes with this little brush. This one is so dirty. This is one of the travel size things I use. So I use a regular size in regular days, but I use this when I'm going to Disney. And I'll do this and put it right in like the sort of lowest part of my bronzer. I don't like to bring it too far in. I, I try and keep it like sort of out on this side of my face. And then I just kind of like blend it out to create that shadow and make sure it's not like too, too harsh. And then I do contour my nose with the same thing. So I just put a little more on and I'm gonna swipe it down like this. Swipe it down. And then again, just sort of like blend it out and I'll put a little bit under here. This is like the least precise contouring, um, but this is all I do. Next up is blush. I love blush. I know a lot of people don't use blush. I think that you should. So this is the blush I've been loving right now for summer. It's really light. It's called Party with multiple A's from Tarte. Um, I'm gonna open it up and it's super light, but I have a ton of different blushes. One that I use a lot in more of the winter is this Tom Ford. It's Tom Ford Disclosure. I will say this is a very expensive blush, but it's really pretty. And then I also recently got this like hot pink Dior blush, um, which is fun. This is color pink. But right now I've been using this one. It's really light, but it's so pretty. I've been using, I got a new brush for it because like I said, this was my old brush. This is a Makeup by Mario brush. It's like a double ended one. So I'm gonna go like this and just sort of tap the blush in right above the contour, right on top of the bronzer. It all sort of ends up in the same place. And I'll just blend like that. It isn't that noticeable at all, but I just think it adds like a really nice sort of rosiness, pinkness, and some life back into my cheeks. And this is one that I personally really try and keep back here and not put on like my here where you would more traditionally push bl put blush. It just doesn't look that good on my face. Sometimes I'll also pull it up like this. It's a very like 80s look. In the 80s, they would do their blush like that. And I don't know, I think it's fun. So I'll like pull it up a little bit. Next up is highlighter. So I could use this brush for highlighter, but this is a little dense for what I personally like. I instead use this brush from Morphe. And my favorite highlighter right now is this Hyper Real Glow palette from MAC. It's the one with like the rose gold writing on it. I also have the gold writing and I just use it at different times. It has three different shades in it and I'm gonna use shade Flash and Awe, which is the lightest shade. And I'll just take a very little bit and put it like right on my cheekbone right above the blush right here super super light and then i put it right down the center of my nose that is my face makeup i at this point am pretty much done with my face now it is on to eyes so first up for eyes i always use the urban decay eyeshadow primer potion i've been using this probably the longest of like any product and i love it i think if you want your eyeshadow to stay you need to use this. It makes a huge difference. It also really makes your eyeshadow like pop more. I've used this, I've used the anti-aging one. I find that they both work fine. So whatever you want. And I just open this up and I put a dot like that on each eyelid and then I rub it in with my finger. Sort of all over the eyelid. I have so many eyeshadow palettes. This is my favorite that I've been using lately because it has a lot of neutrals in it. This is the Morphe 35-0 palette. Here's what the colors inside look like. I'll show you which one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start with this one. So this is gonna be color one. This is gonna be color two. And then this is gonna be my glitter and my glitter. So that's starting with come here often, then hair flip then across the room and then finishing with single life. I start with a big fluffy brush and some come here often and I'm gonna swipe that all over my 
this part of my eyelid. I don't know what, I can't think of the word for this, but not like my actual eyelid, the part above my eyelid. Also, eyeshadow does not stick well on my, bri my brow bone for me, so I blend it up as much as I can, but it just doesn't really stick there for me. Then I take a denser, smaller, fluffy brush. This is Morphe M433, and I'm gonna go in with that second color. Hang on, what's it called? Hair Flip. Take some Hair Flip, and I'm gonna put this just on my eyelid and up here in the outer corner. So like this, and I'm sort of just gonna push it on and then blend it. I'm gonna bring it maybe to like a third or halfway down my eyelid. I start by pushing and then I blend with circular motions. Again, it just won't go up on my brow bone. If you can get it up there, do, but for me, it won't. Then I take this brush, which came inside of the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. I love it. A really dense brush like this is really what you need for this part. And I'm gonna go in with glitter, so the more gold glitter, what's it called? Across the room. And I'm gonna put that on the center of my eye to about like two thirds. And then I'm just sort of gonna blend it in. So to like two thirds. And then where it starts to meet the matte eyeshadow I did before, I just sort of blend it like that. I really pack this on because I like my eyes to be super bright. And I actually forgot about a color that I used. I used a transitional color. It is called Get the Digits. It's this color right here. And I take a little bit of that and I put it on the transition between the glitter and the matte, like right here. Just a little bit. That's it. And then I finish with this really bright silvery one, Single Life, in the center of my eye. Other things I'll do sometimes is I'll put white eyeliner in the center of my eye first, like a little dot, and then I'll put this on top of it to make it really bright. I also will sometimes take a brush like this, let me find it, a brush like this and fluff it out into underneath my brow bone, but I'm not going to do either of those things today. For eyeshadow, I'm going to use this angled brush and I'm going to use the darkest eyeshadow from this palette, which is called Make It Official. This is sort of like a slate brown. Sometimes I will also use this from Urban Decay. This is called Blackout. If I want it to be darker, it just depends on what I'm feeling. In the Disney parks, I often use this, but today I'm going to use Make It Official. I take a little swipe and then I blow on it because otherwise the fallout goes all under my eyes and I have little speckles under my eyes. <sighs> So I blow on it. And then I have to pull my eyelid to do my eyeliner. I would not recommend that if you can avoid doing it, but that's how I've always done it and now I can't do it without. And I'm gonna put it starting in like the halfway point in my eye, all the way down as close to my eyelash line as possible. The shape of my right eye, this it's much easier to get close to my eyelash line. On my left eye, I find that I have more trouble, but just like that. So it looks like this, and then I'll take the same thing, and I do it under my lash line. I do it darker in the corner, and then I do it really lightly along the rest. So I'm gonna go really, not really dark, but like, I sort of get most of it off out here, and then I just use whatever's left on my brush to go as close to the lash line and just sort of make it like a little bit darker like that. Again, just harder for me to get super close on my left eye, but. And then I like to make the outer corners of my eyes darker. I think it makes them pop more. So I'll take more product and really just pack it in to that like inner corner on both the top and the bottom so that it just gets like a little bit darker. Here is one step that I actually do in Disney more often and I don't do it in my regular life more often. I only do this when I really want my eyeliner to like stay because my eyeliner tends to be one of the things that slips. I go in with this. This is the matte black waterproof retractable liner from Sephora. I've used it for years. And I'll add this, especially to the outer corner of my eye where I like it to be darker, 
but I try and bring just a little bit into the other areas too. I find this really helps lock it in. That's why a lot of times I'll use the black eyeshadow um, in Disney because it, it matches better with this. It, they're like the same color. When if I did it on this, it would make it like a little bit more drastic. So I'm not gonna do that. But if you were, you were just gonna go darker here and then really light follow the line that you already made. Next up is mascara. I've never found a mascara I'm like obsessed with. I feel like I changed the mascaras out the most of any product, but I've been using this one. This is the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. For, this is probably like my third bottle, which is a lot for me. I'm, I like it. And I always curl my lashes first going in sort of really close to the lash line and holding, and then I'll pull it out once and maybe do like a little bit more. Pull it out, pull it out, pull it out and squeeze on each of those. I think for me, my eyelashes come like straight out and I have very short, not great eyelashes. So I really sort of need this to like lift them. Then I'm gonna take the Thrive and put it on my upper lashes first. This is a really nice mascara because it comes off really easily, but it stays on well. But when you want to take it off, it just sort of slides like a tube off around your eyelash. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the bottom lashes. I try and do a pretty light coat, but if anything, I'll go a little darker again in like the corner, but all in all, I try and keep it like pretty light just to make it so that my eyelashes are actually visible because since they're blonde, you can't really see them without this. And that's the mascara. Almost done. For my brows, I am a very lazy brow person. I know that brows are like huge for people. I'm super lazy. This, this bottle has literally no labeling on it, so I can't even see exactly what it's called. Let me see if I have another one. This is from Benefit. It's the like brow gel that comes in this shape container. I want to say I use color three, if I remember correctly. And I literally just go like this. I wipe off the excess because it, it, it does come out like with a lot. And I'll run it through my brows just to kind of give them color and give them shape. So I'll like make them fluffy and pull straight up in the middle and then I'll just sort of go out towards my forehead. Super lazy, but it works. And then for lips. So I, people ask me what color lip I use a lot. And it, what you're probably seeing is this. This is another trick I have for getting your lipstick and stuff to stay. You're gonna have to reapply some, but it works pretty well. This is Whirl by MAC. I always use this lip liner and I line my whole entire lips. When I'm lining my lips, I my bottom lip sort of like curves in. I get rid of that curve and I make it go straight out, but I do not overline. And then for the top lip, I try and cut it in a little bit. You'll see, it makes my lips look more like I'm like, I don't know. So I'm gonna go underneath here. Just like following my lip line. And then I kind of pull it up to create that like perfect lip shape. And I bring it in just below the corner of my mouth. Do not bring it to like here. It will make you look like a clown. Yeah, so I kind of like cut it in like here. and then I'll fill in my whole bottom lip. And this is again what I think really helps lipstick stay. If you put lipstick straight on your lips, it's gonna come right off. That's the bottom lip. And then for the top lip, so I'm gonna follow my Cupid's bow and then I'm gonna show you where I sort of pull it in. So I sort of try to pull it in here. So you can see when I close my mouth, it's only going to like, it's hard to do this, but it's only going to like here. If I was to bring it all the way out and down, I would look like a clown. And I know some people overline their lips and are really good at it, but not me. And then again, once I have the shape that I want, I just fill it all in and like refine the edges a little bit. So many, many, many times in a Disney park, I just wear this. Like I would say more often than not, I'm literally just wearing lip liner and I don't even put lipstick on top of it. But if I am gonna put lipstick on top of it, I have a couple different ones, but I really like this one. This is the NARS Laguna and I'll just sort of put that right on top. It's a little bit browner. I literally had one last step to show and my camera died. So that final step is using the setting spray I showed before, the Urban Decay All Nighter. I just use the regular one and I will just literally, generally, generously spritz it all over my face. Let it dry for a sec. I actually already spritzed it, but 
I'm doing it again to show you guys. And that's it. That is my makeup look for every day and the Disney parks. I think it stays pretty well. So hopefully this is helpful. Let me know any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer them. And be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks guys. Bye, time to go charge this camera.